First of all, ladies and gentlemen, um, when we're solving absolute value inequalities, um, it's very, very important that you guys understand something. When we solve absolute value inequalities, we have to make sure before we create our two cases that we isolate the absolute value. This has been one of the large, most common mistakes that I've seen as I've been checking students' work from solving absolute value equations. They're not isolating the absolute value equation. So you have to make sure you isolate, undo the operations that are happening to the absolute value sign, first of all. All right? That's a 2z. That's a 2z. So what we notice is this absolute value sign is being added by 2 and it's being multiplied by 3. So to undo those operations, I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. And I have 3 times 2z plus 5 is less than or equal to 6. Now, to undo multiplying 3, I'm going to divide 3. All right? So I divide 3 on both sides. And therefore, I'm left with 2z plus 5 is less than or equal to 2. Did I lose you on something? How'd I do what? Huh? I divide 6 divided by 3, which was 2. Wait, so you can do another one and go a little slower? Or like redo one? Or OK. So think about it this way. You're solving an equation like this. The first thing we need to do is undo addition and subtraction. Now, the next thing we need to do is undo multiplication. So we divide by 3. Now, this is the exact same thing, except for this problem, we had x was equal to the absolute value of 2z plus 5. So if you'd rather rewrite the absolute value of 2z plus 5 as a variable x, that's perfectly fine. And then, since you know x is equal to that, you can plug it just back in at the end. Yes, Brianna. Why did you drop the absolute value? I didn't. It's still supposed to be there. But does anybody have any general questions? Sinan, I'll give you one more chance, and then I'm taking the phone, OK? I'm just telling you. I, I don't, it really doesn't matter. So um, does anybody have any other questions? Because I think I've been very, very fair with you. You've actually been way too fair. Yes. Yeah, we're not done. I'm just saying, does anybody have any questions up to this point? Does anybody have any questions up to this point? Yeah. OK, what's your question? So you don't have a question. That's not a question. Don't really tell what the heck. OK. Um, so the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, is we've got to understand what exactly is the absolute value equation represent and does it mean? So let's go back through what exactly is the absolute value represent. Remember, the absolute value represents the distance, Kaylee, from 0. So the absolute value is 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is equal to positive 3. So the absolute distance is always that positive value or the positive distance from, or just the distance from 0, like when you look at a number line. So if I said the absolute value of x is equal to 9, Hopefully you guys can understand that I could plug in negative 9 in for x, or I can plug in positive 9, correct? Does that make sense? So there's two, k, there's two opportunities. You could have x equals 9, or x equals negative 9. There's two answers to that. So for absolute value equations and inequalities, you have to understand we are creating two cases. We need to create the case where inside my absolute value is positive. And we also need to create the case when inside my absolute value is negative. Because it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative 9, it's still going to equal 9. Yes, Brad? Would we have a problem that said, like, absolute value of x equals negative 9? That'd be no solution. You can't have it. It's impossible. And there is an example like that on your homework. Um, so what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is create two cases. All right? So if you guys remember for absolute value equations, 
you can only create two cases once your absolute value is simplified or is it isolated. In this case, we have it isolated. But before we create our two cases, I need you guys to understand what are the differences of your two cases. So for absolute value equations, all we did was we set them equal. We set one side, you know, we did the positive and we did the negative. For inequality, it gets a little bit more difficult. When we set up our two cases, depending on what your original inequality sign is, that's going to tell you what type of inequality you're creating, what type of compound inequality you're creating for your two cases. So if you have a less than or a less than or equal to, you are now creating an and inequality. If it's a greater than or greater than or equal to, you are now creating an or inequality. All right? So how exactly does that, rep what does that mean? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if this was an equals, if we were going to do absolute value equations, how would we represent this? We would say 2z plus 5 is equal to 2. Notice how I don't need the inequality symbols anymore or absolute value signs anymore. And then this would be 2z plus 5 equals negative 2. Does everybody agree with me? If we were doing absolute value equations, that's how we would do the two cases. You do one as the positive, or one as it's written, and the other one you negate it. Does that make sense? However, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have an equation. We have an inequality. So when we do our inequality, this remains the same. But now, on the one we negated, we have to flip the sign. Because for those of you that are doing, um, for those of you that are solving one variable inequalities and in graphing, you guys remember, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, what happens with the sign? You have to flip it, right? So if I negate this sign, I gotta, or if I negate the other side, I got to make sure I flip the inequality sign. All right? The other step is notice my original inequality was an and, right? So when I create my two cases, I'm creating a compound inequality of the form and. All right? Because that's what my original inequality is. So it's going to be very important you guys know the distinction between these two for your absolute value. Now, is it OK if you guys solve for these? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can solve. So 2z is less than or equal to a negative 3. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. z is less than or equal to a negative 3 halves. Over here, minus 5, minus 5. 2z is greater than or equal to um, minus 5. So that would be a negative 3. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Wait a minute, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's a negative 7. No wonder. All right, so I really don't like using decimals, but when I'm graphing, I think decimals sometimes are easy to understand how to graph. So negative 3 halves is equal to negative 1.5, OK? And negative 7 halves is equivalent to negative 3.5. All right? If you guys want to use your calculator, that's fine You know to go into there. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what I have is y is less than negative 1.5 and or, I'm sorry, z is less than negative 1.5 and z is greater than negative 3.5. So how are we going to look? How is that going to look? So let's do, let's have, zero, let's have 0 here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, <coughs> negative 4, negative 5, and here's positive 1. So what we need to do when we're doing an and, does anybody remember what an and, what's important about graphing an and? Anybody want to raise their hand? Important about graphing an and? There's something that's very, very important, yes? Well, that's going to be that's going to deal with the inequality symbol. Well, what what are we looking for when we're graphing an and compound inequality? We're looking for the intersection, right? And is where they intersect. So what we have to do is we have to graph each of these separately. All right. So to graph z is less than negative one point five, I estimate where negative one point five is, which is like right here, right? So I'll put a nice little dot. Now, all the values that are less than negative 1.5, is that going to be going to the left or to the right? To the left. 
Everybody agree with me? That's what that would look like? Oh, and then going back to Brianna's comment, this is less than or equal to. So is that going to be shaded in or open? It's going to be closed, right? Yeah. yeah. Now let's go and graph z is greater than negative 3.5. So I go and find negative 3.5, which is right here. Again, that's greater than or equal to, so that's going to be open. And then that one says all values that are greater than negative 3.5. So is that going to be to the right or to the left? Right. right. right? Now, where do these intersect? Where do these two graphs intersect? Between negative 3.5 and between negative 1.5. So your graph is just going to look like that. Then you can kind of erase the rest of this because it's not really part. Your solution's only going to be between those two values. All right? So to recap for you, 